you for joining us once again for an episode of That Solo Life, the podcast about people who are in business for themselves, who are self-employed, uh, primarily in the PR and marketing industry, but really anyone out there who has set out on their own course to make a living. My name is Michelle Kane of Voice Matters LLC, and I'm here with my lovely co-host, Karen Swim of Words for Hire and Solo PR Pro. Hey, Karen, how are you today? Hello, Michelle. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. It's the beginning of another month. We're, yes. we're up for it. That's what I keep telling myself. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You sort of have to talk yourself into it. I have to talk myself into the month. Actually, this entire week, I kept yes. thinking. Every day this week, I thought it was the 31st of July. Kid you oh, not. Oh, my. Oh, no. not every single day and every single day I would check my phone and I would say it's not the 31st of July and and then I kept <laughs> wondering every day like well when is it gonna happen for God's sake? <laughs> see, see where and then on my end it was the countdown is on the end of the month is coming I need to accomplish xyz and then on the first of the month I need to report an invoice and ah uh, it's the double-edged sword we love the reporting and the invoicing we hate the yeah. reporting and the invoicing. <laughs> that's so true that's so true yeah and and you know I it's it's an awesome problem to have and then you know things come in sideways you and you know I'm thinking oh, yes I should get that done today but I must get back to the reporting and the invoice. So anyway, yeah. it's all first world and, problems, all of them. And you know, <laughs> actually, that's a good uh, that's a good segue because um, I use some technology to help me with those issues. And Sweet. today we're talking all about PR tech tools. Um, yeah, so a new report came out from my alma mater, USC, about. Um, the future of technology and communication. And yes. um, we we were taking a look at some of the things that were called out and really, really interesting. And I think, I mean, obviously technology is such a integral part of our work and personal lives and it changes so much. I mean, it it it, it can make your head spin how rapidly things change. And it's really apparent that communication professionals not only rely on it, but we have to get better and better about how we use these tools um, to not only measure the impact of our campaigns, but um, we need to get better at accessing experts that can analyze data, that can you know, inform the work that we do. Um, we're not just measuring client campaigns anymore, but we're measuring every step of the customer journey. And oh, by the way, those same analytical tools actually help us to formulate strategies to be able to do our work, um, to measure ourselves and to measure the results of what we're doing so that we can be more effective. And, and so there's just, you know, in the past, there may have been a way around sort of not, you know, looking at data and using technology in that way. But it's clear that those are those days are long over. So, um, but there were some things in this report that had nothing to do with technology that I thought interesting. Michelle, right. you you dug into it. Um, I did. What, what was the thing that kind of surprised you? Um, I, it was interesting because one thing I noticed, and and this is definitely not to say, well, we sell a PR pros are so much smarter, but it, it was interesting to see the notion of planning for the end being something relatively new or something to watch out for, you know, because we've for several years now, we've all talked about whenever you have a strategy, have your measurable goal in mind, you know, set that goal and plan backwards from it so you can better achieve it. And, um, you know, especially as it speaks to data, whether that's Google analytics for hitting a certain page on a website from a PR campaign or, you know, whatever it may be, it kind of surprised me that, uh, and again, don't, don't hate me out there, but in the greater profession, it seemed like, oh, yeah, so, you know, use your data to reach a measurable goal. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, it's always nice to know that 
all right, I, you know, we don't, we know that no one knows everything. So sometimes when we get deep into the data dive, you know, <laughs> my inadequacy monster comes roaring out. But it was nice to know, at least conceptually, okay, cool. So we're we're on par, we're doing well, that's good. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, I guess well, you I know, was, for me, yeah. I'm sorry. No, one no, go ahead. Things, there were a few things that stood out. But one of the things that stood out is, and, and kind of the reason that they did the survey is when, you know, they, they looked at, you know, how PR professionals um, felt about, you know, the coming years and whether or not the coming years would bring considerable or drastic change. Something yes. that you just mentioned came out is that um, agency executives, 72% really um, expect substantial change versus internal or in-house professionals, only 60%. And yes. I definitely believe that that's because for those who practice PR, whether it's in an agency, a micro agency, or an in-house, while we are all PR professionals, the nature of, of how we practice really impacts how we see things. So an agency is dealing with a diverse base of clients, and they're seeing changes from a different perspective than an in-house person who you know, Correct. for all intents and purposes is really, they're still an employee of a corporation Correct. practicing PR on behalf of one entity. And so they're, they may be in some ways um, shielded from what's happening in a broader sense because they're seeing everything through the lens of their organization. So you go to a job, right? And you know that, you know, you can say, oh, you know, things are going to change in our industry or in our company in the next years, but you're a little bit more shielded from what's happening in the communications industry at large. And, you know, as solo professionals, we definitely, I think, are tend to be um, more sensitive and on the cutting edge of change by nature of we move in and out of all of those environments. We, True you know, work with agencies, we work with companies, we work with small business owners, medium sized business owners. So we see a, a bigger microcosm of, of the market that we serve. And so I think that we pick up on things a little bit quicker and we understand that. So that was interesting to me. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. And um, one of the other items that really stood out to me was um, just the whole idea of earned, owned, paid, shared, and about how, it really speaks to the education aspect of what we do, of educating our client, you know, what something really means. Because um, at the CEO level, it seemed like they weren't accounting for paid social. They weren't seeing that as necessarily being advertising. And, and mm. th they were just seeing that as, well, that's shared, you know, that's or earned. It's yeah. just out there. It's like, well, no, you're paying me to do it and you're paying for it to be seen. So really that needs to be lumped in, in this category. And that was, I you agree. know, that's, you know, very inside baseball, as they say. But, uh, but I thought that was interesting too. Um, another well, aspect that, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. What was the no, other aspect an, of it? Another aspect that, that hopped out at me was, you know, just the whole nod to artificial intelligence and AI. Mm -hmm. And just need to be aware of that because... So I wrote this blog, and then in yesterday's Philadelphia Inquirer, there was an article where J.P. Morgan Chase is already generating content via artificial intelligence, which, you know, as a PR pro, partly makes me think, oh, really? <laughs> but yeah. also, yeah, it really dovetails with what this is saying. It's like, yes, of course, we're, we're always going to need the human element of PR, but you know, they're finding that, you know, they allege that some of the copy generated by the AI was performing better. So they say, I don't know. I could send you the wow. link to that article. Maybe. Yeah. 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 That was, that went down well with my cornflakes. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, yeah, no kidding. And I, you know, artificial intelligence, again, is something that I don't think that, you know, we've yet, um, tackled enough in communications to really understand 
um, the utility of it for right. our own work, as well as understanding sort of the broader implications. And I think we'll begin to hear more and more about AI and PR over over the coming year. Um, and hopefully more experts jumping in to, to help us navigate the, the way forward and to teach us um, some yes. of the that we may be missing. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the the stats of the study said that only 18% of current PR pros are have responded favorably to the importance of AI and future PR work, and 53% of PR students said so. The kids know, and you know what? Let's face it. As PR pros, even throughout our day, how many times do we talk to Google, Alexa, Siri? You know, we're already in it. I think we just have to kind of take a moment and look at it from the other direction. Yeah. Well, you know what else I found really, really enlightening about this report is that this year they added something different. So normally they survey PR pros and students, but this year they also included CEOs um, and asked them questions about the company's communication efforts. And so what I thought was interesting is when they asked about goals for the organization in the year ahead, CEOs, 44% of CEOs said that, you know, one of the goals was selling products and services. No surprise mm-hmm. there. Right. But only 25% of in-house communicators said selling products and services. That's, that's kind of a huge gap. And, and the reason that stood out for me is because I truly believe that that gap is not only, um, Uh, does not only appear between CEOs and in-house communicators. I believe that that gap appears across the industry. We all know that there is an awareness and we all know that, you know, the bottom line is important, but I still see here um, people acting in ways that show that they're still not understanding how to tie the value of what communication does to driving bottom line results. And I think we have to get better about it because of statistics like this. If you're not aligned with what your CEO wants to achieve, then you risk either losing clients or having departments reassigned or decimated because the value is not apparent and it is what it is. Um, You know, we could talk a whole lot of talk about all of the other things that PR does, but if we're not really, really making that um, connection for people between what we do and how it moves the needle in sales, then we are failing our, the people that we serve, whether you're an in-house person or whether you are, you know, an agency serving outside clients. That's very true. Very true. And I, and I wonder, you know, not, not to get too deeply into the brains of people I don't even know. I wonder if the, the other categories being differentiating brand from the competition, mm-hmm. um, marshalling data and analytics to gain insight into opinions, issues, and trends. I wonder if from their perception, those tactics, those activities feed into the sale. Yeah. But it is very dangerous not to explicitly think about, well, this company is in business to sell their widgets and their services. So we need to help get them there. Well, yeah. And as you brought up those other areas, that that whole chart, and and we definitely recommend that you guys download this report and go through it for yourself um, on Tuesday, August 6th, we have a recap of the report on the Solo PR Pro blog, but um, the report, you know, well worth a read and, you know, Mm -hmm. you can, you know, determine your, your own findings from it, but differentiating brand from the competition, CEOs and in-house communicators were 100% aligned, 39% in each group agreed that that was a goal. Um, On the using the data and analytics to gain insight, they were pretty aligned there. 12% of the CEOs cited that as a goal, 14% of in-house communicators. The problem with that stat, in my opinion, is that's such a small number of people that have that as a goal. That's an issue too. 
Um, right. It's a different kind of issue and, and they're right. aligned. So they're not putting enough, I think, importance on utilizing data and analytics. And, and that's that for all of you listening who might be um, in a communications role, that's an opportunity. Yes, and it's an opportunity absolutely. that you need to be proactive about because opportunities soon become requirements. And if you wait until it's a requirement, then you may have less to offer. So I say we all need to understand that analytics is critical to so much of our role. And the sooner that you get on board with teaching your organization about how to collect and gather, measure, and leverage that data, the better for you. Right. Um, the other thing that was kind of interesting is that 1% um, of CEOs set the goal was to shape position on societal issues and only 8% of in-house communicators. And, and I guess I was slightly surprised by that because today more and more companies seem to be jumping into um, yes cultural and societal issues and making that part of their brand story. But according to the survey, it's, it's not only not an important goal, but it's not something that they care to drive conversations about. Um, it, because it, it also says, you know, of the people that are likely to communicate about societal issues, what are the most relevant topics? And, and the two biggest ones were diversity and inclusion. Yeah. And again, here, 64% um, of um, in-house communicators talked about that. Only 28% of the CEOs, uh, another troubling stat. Um, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and 45% of CEOs said data privacy. I think that should be, honestly, kind of higher. almost a hundred percent and yes. it helps only 28 percent of um communicators so you know and i and i get it i think that as communicators diversity and inclusion and because again we're measuring um what our audiences are talking about right because our audience you know the in-house audience is one audience but we also have the external audience and i think from that purview they're absolutely right Diversity and inclusion conversations are definitely happening, um, and there are definitely, there's lots of room for improvement. We know that that is an important topic to address. Um, it makes us all stronger and better, and because of the Me Too movement and gender pay equality, I mean, we could go on and on and on why, you know, these things are needed and these conversations actually should be happening, mm -hmm. but communicators real, realize the value of it, but apparently CEOs not so much. much and that yeah i mean yeah. and with all this you know i'm glad that this pr and tech tools um study included these types of insights because um it was really informative to just to just see you know where yes. the perspectives where, are and what people think is happening right and where their priorities lie you know uh because of those mm -hmm. items it's it's the data privacy and the healthcare really things that could that they see as affecting their bottom line, I'm sure. And yeah. depending what businesses they are in, they could just see the rest as fluff or not relevant to them. But I don't know, you know, we're yeah. if if they're in yeah. business, you're 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 dealing with people to some degree. So uh, yeah, I th I think a little bit of it's short sighted and and they really do need to increase their their uh, thought processes well, <laughs> in, in those areas. The other gap was, you know, <laughs> you know, they asked, are you likely to communicate about societal issues? And 60% of CEOs said, not likely. Yeah, and no. 69% <laughs> of in-house communicators said, likely. <laughs> it's like, no, we should talk about that. No, we should not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, or, or as I always like to say, no, let's talk about it before they talk about us. So yeah. you want to take let's the lead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, honestly, that represents a classic struggle in PR, right? We understand that that silence is not always the best, right. um, the best <laughs> strategy. CEOs are like, nope, not talking about that. And communicators are like, oh, no, 
we should really be talking about that. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I get it. I understand that's a hard battle. You know, I have clients that want to build thought leadership platforms and thought leadership means leading, <laughs> not being a thought <laughs> follower. So <laughs> to lead, you sort of have to have an opinion and talk about things. Yeah. They want that, but they don't want to be the first to have an opinion. Um, and so it just makes sense. It makes perfect sense <laughs> to me. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, and I don't, yeah, you, sometimes you wonder, you know, don't you see the impact you could have? Or, you know, what are you afraid of? Come on, jump in. It's fine. I think, Welcome. you know, it all goes down to, you know, as a, as a business culture, we have always, you know, the business model has been to sort of stay out of the fray of things um, and try to be neutral so that you don't isolate any part of your of True. your business audience, right? Keep your keep your head down. And admittedly, and I these get are it. very confusing times um, because yes. <laughs> it seems that now <laughs> everybody has a voice about everything and, and it's hard not to express some type of an opinion. And, you know, I still though advise companies, you don't need to be a part of every single conversation, but you should be a part of the conversations that are relevant to you and to your right. industry. And right. you should not be afraid to take leadership on issues that impact the way forward for your business and for your audience. That doesn't mean be, you know, that every company has to be an activist company, but I think that we have to be aware that as a business, you're doing business in a larger context and you yes. have to be tapped into the people that you serve. And that again is where you really should make use of your communicators, whether they are internal or external teams, to guide you on the topics and issues that you should be addressing and to help you to um, find the best path to talk about those things. Right, exactly. That's that's why we're here. We're here to that's help you guys. Yes. We are. We're here to help get you through it. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> now, there's there's all kinds of goodness in this in this report. So we really suggest that you download it, check out the summary that's going to come out. Um, you know, we'd love to hear what you think about Absolutely. about what's what's in this and what's to come. You know, it's 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 always good to uh, get an idea of you know what areas we need to brush up on, what we need to be aware of, because you know, forewarned is forearmed, and. Uh, yeah, we're glad this report comes out and it's it's full of lots of good juicy juicy information. It is. It's I mean, every slide is, you know, really inspired me to just stop and sort of think about, you know, how would answer these questions and how this information really impacts what I do and and how I feel about the future and and, yes. and even giving me a window into, you know, those that I serve and will potentially serve in the future. So I definitely, you know, we're yeah. PR people. We love data. We love statistics. We love studies. And I think that this is a worthwhile one that does have some information in there that's worth going through a time or two. Um, I've looked at it a few times now and kind of gone back. And um, it also may be, you know, good data to reference in presentations or, you know, in, in helping to educate your clients around topics that, you know, you may be running into in your work. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially the one aspect that talked about technological skills that future PR communications pros will need to be successful. Honestly, yeah. I think that those are tactics that our clients will need to be successful because big data analytics came in at 65%, followed by video production at 59%. And how many of us have been saying you need to use more video in your social media, mm. on your website? Of course, search engine optimization, we've all known that. That's 59%. This warmed to my heart, digital design at 54%. Um, and user experience at 53 I, I, I don't know about you, but I don't know how many times I've said to clients, you know, the less clicks, the better. Make your website yeah. user-friendly. You know, you don't want to have them make, make your uh, customers have to hunt for the information that they need. Yeah. You know, that's a really good point. And, and it's funny because I saw um, a discussion on LinkedIn about 
kind of around this exact same issue of PR and technology and skill sets for the future. Um, yeah. My, my uh, sorry. Belle has my a lot to say. Always, she has a lot to say on this topic. Um, but they were questioning, you know, they were like, wow, you know, I'm in the job market and I'm noticing that a lot more is required uh, beyond just what we think of as the PR skills. And so, you know, again, I think that this report also can, you know, for those who are, are doing career planning and, and thinking about, you know, your career progression over the next, you know, one to five years, this is a good report to dig into to see if there are areas where you have gaps that um, you can now just, you know, invest some time in doing professional development in those areas to prepare you for the future. And I mean, I, I definitely believe that that goes for um, solos as well as those that are uh, traditionally employed. It's important to stay on top of that and, and look at, you know, areas where we might need to grow our skill set or, or learn, you know, maybe you don't know. Some people that come out of, uh, right. of workforces are, don't have any exposure to data analytics because an entirely different department handles that. And so right. um, it may just really be learning something brand new. Right. But right. all of those things, I think, are protection to ensure that we can continue to do our work and continue to grow and to continue to, to be valuable. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us yet again for another episode of That Solo Life. We hope you've gotten something out of today and all our other episodes. Please subscribe, um, sign up, and visit soloprpro.com for all sorts of other goodness about, about the public relations and marketing industry. Thank you so much. And don't forget to, uh, to visit soloprpro.com. We have a blog post going up on this very topic on Tuesday, August 6th, and would love it if you would pop by, take a read, um, and leave us your comments, and uh, join in for a new episode every Monday. Thank you. Thank you.